Hi, today we'll show you how you can build your asynchronous models differently. We will be basing on a checkpoint and hopefully your answer to the question will be yes. And the question will be, is it really that simple? Hi, Tomek. Hi, Lukasz. So, well, I'm uh, not sure, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> well, yeah, let's see. <clears throat> let's see. Uh, but OK, so we refactored the task view model builder from the last episode. If you haven't watched it, check it out. I think it's um, int interesting and also important to see uh, the different implementations of how you can actually build your uh, async read models. And Tomek, will you take us through this implementation? Yeah, let's jump into the code uh, now. So you can see here we have like <clears throat> diff between the two versions from the last episode on the left hand side and on the and the newest one here on the right hand side. <clears throat> and what's what's different here? I mean, if you recall correctly, in the last episode we were like basing on some uh, f additional field for the all for all fields like with the underscore changed, and we were basing on 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 this one. We will get to it. Um, but now we like we wanted to do it in a different way, so without those additional fields, uh, mm -hmm. that sometimes can be scary, right? If you have to replicate, I don't know, the huge model with a lot of them, let's say. Uh, with a different approach, I like it uh, more than the previous one. Uh, but yeah, you can like judge whether you like it better or, or not. And yeah, in the call method, you can see that before we were like just um, taking an event and checking which one of those events um, of which method should be applied based on the event. And here what we do, we actually retrieve the task view model. So the one, the read model that we have, or we create like new one mm -hmm. there. <clears throat> we have a checkpoint uh, in this task view model. So the checkpoint is like new column, which we, uh, which put to the read model, which hand, uh, which keeps the last event applied to this specific row, right? To this specific uh, read model. Yeah, it's a UUID uh, when it comes to the internals. Exactly. <clears throat> um, and then we, based on uh, the task ID, we take the stream. Uh, so here we like, we read all those uh, events that were published since the uh, since the uh, last checkpoint, so the event that we had before in the stream, <clears throat> and we go one by one, and we are trying to apply those events to our read model. And um, at the end, we update the checkpoint with the old uh, with the newest uh, event that we have here, and we save the model. <clears throat> yeah, we just save the latest uh, changes in the model. Just one more thing is that um, in this approach, uh, as you can see, uh, we are reading from the checkpoint if it exists. And uh, one important thing is that we don't, if the checkpoint is the event ID, as Tomek mentioned, you, we are not reading that event, uh, the last event with the event ID, right? So we don't include the checkpoint, checkpoint, we include every event after the checkpoint. It's yeah, important yeah. to remember. Uh, yeah, and then you can see how those uh, methods for the sp uh, specific um, changes were like simplified. We don't need those uh, additional changed fields. Uh, fields. Mm -hmm. We just like apply the correct value to the to to, to the model, right? <clears throat> yeah, and this order it is um, ensured by the stream itself. So the events are applied to the stream, they are appended to the stream, right? And the the order that we have in a stream determines which um, the order that the read model will be uh, built in. So, uh, and I, this is from like the reasoning behind this is that even if you would have any bug in the read model, you would apply the events again, right? You will just uh, truncate this read model, you would remove it, and then you would apply each event once again. So uh, eventually you would end up with similar algorithm and you would end up in the same situation, right? So you would read the stream from the start till the end, applying each of those events, um, and you would have the same result, basically. That's why if we rely on the event, we don't have to check those uh, when the name was changed and so on and so forth, right? So we can just drop those col columns and the mm, implementation is, um, I mean, the read model is a little bit 
uh, more concise, it's smaller, uh, the amount of the columns is, well, uh, it's half. So if you have two columns for each property, well, then the model has twice as many columns as it could possibly have, right? That's why uh, this implementation, it's, as I said, a little bit more concise. Okay, and probably we could end this episode right here, right? Yeah, because like <clears throat> the last time, you can see that we always like apply in correct order, right? Because we read from the stream with the, with the same order. But sometimes it can happen <laughs> that <clears throat> when um, when we again we we have multiple um, multiple uh, consumers, but uh, and even though they like are processing like event after event in the correct order, then sometimes the the task itself, like the the job, can take longer than another one, right? With that, uh, that is, sh sh is happening like later, but it's like the, the first one takes longer than the second one. And again, we can somehow overwrite the uh, value for the name, for example. And we have like test for that where we... Yeah, and before we just go through yeah. this test, I'll uh, add one more thing. Uh, the previous implementation uh, has been enhanced by some tests. It's not 100 of test coverage, but if you're curious, you can go to the task app repository and check it out. It's in the services directory. It's called task view model builder test. Mm. And also now we have the concurrency test between uh, the concurrency test that checks the race of two different uh, task view read models that try to modify the same resource. <clears throat> yep, so that's actually our initial version of this test, right? Because we just wanted to reproduce um, what we had, um, what we were thinking about. Yeah, and actually, we wanted to confirm the hypothesis, right? The hypothesis was exactly. that, uh, that actually when we configure and when, when we get into certain state, into a certain environment where, uh, as Tomek mentioned, one job is slower than the other, then we may actually overwrite the, um, the read model and make the state not correct. I wouldn't say it's inconsistent because it is somehow consistent, but it would be incorrect because the order would actually matter. So um, the test is very stupid for now, but we will refactor it. Keep on. Um, all right, Tomek. Uh, so it's actually the order of finishing the job, right? <laughs> it's like the, yeah. the order we are like, we are reading one after another, that, that in, we read those events in the correct order, the only when the, when the jobs finish, right? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> the order of finishing the, those jobs is like, can cause some issues. So like here we, like we are uh, publishing the uh, task created. So we create some kind of uh, task here. <clears throat> We uh, perform that job here, and then we and want to change. Sorry, this is just preparation mm -hmm. to uh, have task created because we don't want our concurring jobs to really care about this small fact. Exactly, and then we have like we are changing name to the some kind of init name for this uh, for this task, um, and then we have like two threads here. Um, in one, we will like. After some time, we will, uh, one second, we will change the name of, mm -hmm. uh, of the task. But on the in the first one, we wanted to simulate that the first, um, first thread will like, the processing, the thread itself uh, will take longer than this one, right? The publish will happen later, but then the, the first one will, um, f first thread will take longer. So we like to the metadata of this uh, event, we added um, some kind of sleep flag here, and in the task builder, where we when we uh, we read this um, value from the metadata, and then when we change the task name, um, we sleep for the five seconds, right? So the first init name, when we set it, it will take five seconds uh, longer. <clears throat> Yeah, but why, why, why is it like this? So the reason is that when, uh, can you go back to the code? So when, oh, yeah. uh, and scroll up please, when the uh, first event handler will fetch the events, right? That's the first one that is running. It will fetch all the events and then after one second, the other handler will uh, 
append new event to the stream. So this event will not be in that stream anymore. And the second one will start processing. It will finish yep. the processing and then this one will actually, the sleep in the ch change task method will uh, already be over, right? So it will wake up. And then this one will start processing with the information that it has, right? So it has wrong information about the stream. It's outdated. And what it will do, it will anyway perform the, um, let's say it will just follow the process, follow the handl handling the event, and it will eventually save this wrong information to the database. And this is what this test is testing. So uh, before switching to um, proper implementation, we actually want to see the red test that uh, it actually fails. And by the way, we will change this test uh, slightly because it's very, uh, the implementation is very stupid, but that was the just first idea to confirm uh, that they're already, um, that we understand and that we actually uh, know what we are looking for. And as you can see, it's red. Yeah, you can see that here. <clears throat> that was the first, uh, that was the first uh, builder, right? Uh, no, this one, this one. Uh, from task name changed <clears throat> and it finished uh, after the the second one right so yes yeah, so, so the second but one it, it, it had only this event uh, back then right when it started it had only one event mm -hmm. with the task name changed and then there was another handler that uh, applied correctly two mm -hmm. events and then again this um this handler like it's um, the same one here yeah the same one yeah. So in the assertion we like we have the init name as the final one, which mm -hmm. is not correct. It's not correct, right? So the user would see incorrect, um, incorrect uh, data. Okay, but as I mentioned, the te this test is stupid. We wouldn't ever modify the production code, right? We wouldn't, we wouldn't um, give it some no? more slips and <laughs> uh, and pretty prints to have a running test. So, but we were thinking, how can you <laughs> simulate? What? If development, right? <laughs> <laughs> if driven development, um, <clears throat> that's the driven development design, whatever. Uh, yeah, it's development, by the way. Yeah, so we're thinking how we can actually make this test worthy uh, of being committed to master and also less stupid. Uh, so because what we want to do, we want to simulate that, well, something is slow on this uh, job or the worker or the thread actually that is performing this task. So we thought that we need to decorate it somehow, right? And we decided to make the implementation that will be used only for tests. As you can see, we name it slow task view model builder. And what it does, it inherits from the task view model builder and before calling the actual method change task name, because that's the one we are basing our test on, it sleeps for one second. Why not five anymore? Well, because we find out that the one second is more than enough for this test to uh, be um, to run correctly, uh, both on my machine and Tomek's machine. We don't have CI for this project yet, but if it would be incorrect, we would try to um, adjust this number uh, to um, to actually match it in the in the CI. For now, this is okay. This is the correct value, and the results are pretty much the same. Yep, and here in the first thread you can see that we use this one, but on the second thread we like we use the regular one. <clears throat> so the logic is the same, right? The first one is supposed mm -hmm. to be a little bit slower, so it sleeps one second before doing the actual job, and the other one um, is actually it waits uh, half of the second to um, to actually append this event to the stream to, to the task name change, but we want it to be last, right? And uh, the reason this test is green is because we implemented the solution to actually fix it. And Tomek, what is the solution? So here we have optimistic locking <clears throat> for that. That's it. Um... See you. <laughs> <laughs> see ya. Okay, thanks. Bye. <laughs> Actually, you can Do see it. the code didn't change, right? Do it yourself. <clears throat> uh, yeah. Uh, exactly. And uh, yeah, so what we've done here, I think we can go it commit by commit, right? Here. Uh, I'm not sure because I use a stupid commit names, but um, okay, <laughs> we can do that. Um, so one of the other solutions that we were actually uh, discussing was um, advisory log. 
But for this uh -huh. case, uh, the optimistic look was enough. And all you had to do is that we had to add this um, column, the log version to, the, to our model, and then uh, let the framework take care of the optimistic locking. And someone exactly. might ask, why is this enough? What happens if you create um, a new task? Wouldn't, is there a chance that you will have to do um, two duplicated tasks? And the answer is no, yes. because we are basic <laughs> I mean, on the. The answer is no, <laughs> and yes, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> and because we are ba uh, we are relying on the task ID. Yeah, um, would you show the schema RP? Yep. So it was added here, right? And we have the. Yeah, this is the task ID that we use when we create a new task. We actually uh, always apply the ID from the event, um, which uh, contains in the data the task ID, and then um, it's a primary key. So uh, the database is doing the job for us. It's protecting us from getting the duplicate task created in the read model, which would all obviously uh, have a bad user experience for the user. As you can also see here, uh, we are using the checkpoint. Um, it's a UUID in the last implementation, and uh, as mentioned, the lock version that is bumped by the framework. Mm, yep. Yeah. And yeah. also, you can see that it works because, like, <clears throat> we also captured the exception that was thrown, right? And we can see that the stale object error um, occurs here when you are trying to change the name. Mm -hmm. And according to the documentation, this is the error that you're getting when there is an optimistic locking set for a model and you are actually getting into trouble, meaning that the version has changed and the other service, in our case, the slow task view model builder is trying to actually change the same resource without having the actual version. And um, by the way, this code, it's available on our blog. Uh, there's a blog post regarding that, describing this uh, entire test structure. You can copy, paste that, and use it in your uh, in your projects. If you're using the, if you're ever having concurrency problems, it's really good, and I really, mm, I really encourage you to first to write a test that would confirm that you actually can reproduce it, and that your fix will bring you desired. Um, Problem solved, benefits, whatever. Yeah, that your fix actually works. Uh, that's what I want to say. Yep. And I think it's that's, that's it for today, right? Yep, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions regarding this, please uh, leave a comment. Uh, we'll be happy to see new subscribers. And also, uh, this implementation, as always, it's uh, available in the task app repository. We will link the blog post. Uh, to describing the test in the comment section as well. Thanks. Thank you. Bye.